Richard watched the beautiful woman as she drank her coffee. She slowly sipped the warm beverage, then breathed out a warm sigh, smiling that beautiful smile of hers. Oh, how he loved the way she smiled. That beautiful white smile she had always shown every morning just at this exact spot. Richard had been watching her for weeks now. He knew it was not socially acceptable to be following such a beautiful woman around, but he couldn't help himself. Richard was way too shy to speak to her, yet he was too compelled by her beauty to stay away. Every morning Richard carefully observed her while she sat in the coffee shop. He knew better than to just stand and stare, so he walked nonchalantly around the store he was pretending to shop in. Across the street, he could see her sitting by the window in the exact same seat that she always sat in. Richard knew her routine well. She was drinking her usual coffee, a vanilla cream latte. She was wearing a green sweater and a pair of skinny jeans. She had a small black beanie that was gently covering the flowing waterfall of dark brown hair that gracefully fell down her shoulders. She was looking out the window, her eyes gently skimming the hustle and bustle of the city. It could have appeared that she was looking right at him, but she couldn't possibly see him. There was no way she could notice him gazing upon her. He was way too careful for that. The window of the store was tinted, and the sun would only reflect what she was seeing. It was the perfect camouflage. The woman seemed to be thinking deeply about something, but of course, Richard could never tell exactly what it was. He liked to think she was looking forward to her day, or that she was looking forward to receiving something important. However, he mainly liked to think that she was thinking about him. That maybe there was a chance that one day he would be able to actually have her in his arms and he could show her how much he really cared about her. The worst part is, even though Richard had been following her for so long, he had no idea what her name was. He figured, after watching her for so long, he would have gotten some kind of clue. Though all of his efforts to find her name were fruitless, he didn't let that stop him. In fact, he even made a name for her. Sarah. Why? Sarah is a pretty name. Not to mention it means princess. That's why he decided to call her that. She was his princess. And someday, he would be the knight in shining armor to sweep her off her feet. She just didn't know it yet. Can I help you, sir? Richard jumped at the unfamiliar voice, turning to see an older man standing by him. What? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you, the man chuckled. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you were finding everything okay. Um, yeah, I'm just browsing, Richard said with a slight panic. No worries, young man. Just let me know if you need any help. The man responded, then walked away. Richard was staring at Sarah for so long, he almost forgot that he was in the store. What store was this again? Richard thought, looking around. Dusty books, tables, lamps. The antique store, I remember now. After pretending to browse the price tag on a lamp and a bedside table, he watched Sarah finish her coffee and walk to her car. He watched her climb into her green Honda Accord and drive down the road. After he saw her drive away, he started to count. Ten. Nine. Eight. He seven, knew her so well, six, he knew when to leave, when five, to return, and even where to go. Four, three. After Richard had finished counting, he knew it was one. safe to leave. She didn't leave any personal items on her table, so there was no way she was coming back. He was safe to leave without her even noticing he was only a short distance behind her. Richard gave a gentle wave to the shopkeeper and walked out of the door. He walked around the back of the store through an alley to the other side of the street. He knew she would have noticed his car if he parked outside every day. Richard grinned at his sagacity as he opened up the door to his pickup and drove off. The time was exactly the same as it always was, every day when he left this spot. 7.25 a.m. Time to go to work.
He slowly followed the same trail, every day, making his way to the law firm she worked at, Brunswick and Murdoch. By 7.59, Richard had parked his truck outside, set a pair of binoculars on the dash, and waited for her silhouette to appear in the window. Three, two, one. Sarah appeared in the window and she drew back the curtains, like clockwork. She was very punctual, just like Richard. That was something that made Richard fall for her even more. She wasn't like the other ones, oh no, not at all. The other women he had seen were too messy, too slow, or too fast. They were always too early or too late. None of them were on time. That is, except for Sarah. When Richard first started his search for women, he tried to see past the flaws and mistakes, but it always led to the same ending. No, please, stop it! Leave me alone, you freak! If they didn't want him, no one would have them. You may think that is unfair, but it really isn't. Think about all the pretty, happy couples you see all the time. There's too many of them. Always making everyone else's lives dull and lonely in comparison to their perfect relationship. They all had someone. Everyone did. Everyone. Except Richard. How come they deserve happiness? Doesn't he deserve to be happy? So Richard figured he would find the one perfect for him, all on his own. All he had to do was, well, narrow down his search. Richard watched Sarah sitting at her desk on the opposite side of the window. She played with her hair as she spoke to people on the phone. Who she was talking to, Richard could only speculate, but he tried to imagine the conversation. Sometimes the conversation was about the weather, other times it was about the coffee she had that morning. On some occasions, he would imagine that she was talking about him. Oh my gosh, I saw this gorgeous guy at the coffee shop! However, he always had a feeling it wasn't about him. She didn't even know he existed. At least, not yet. His mind trailed off to the first time he brought home his first choice. Her name was Samantha. She was a pretty blonde girl. She was normally late to work and always came up with some sort of excuse. That, of course, was a turn-off for Richard. However, he tried to give her a chance. He abducted her from her bed one night after she had a long night at the bar. She was so drunk she never even noticed she left the house. Richard took her to his basement, lit some candles, and waited for her to wake up. While she was sleeping, he told her about how he followed her knew everything about her, and wanted her to know everything about him. He told her about how pretty she was, and how he would be able to help her be more punctual so she wouldn't be late for work again. Richard tried to be romantic. He really did. But when she woke up, she only screamed. She cried for help, screamed for someone to save her from this freak. The noise was dreadful, and Richard couldn't stand it. So he did the only thing he knew that would shut her up. He grabbed her throat and squeezed as hard as he could. After a loud snap, she stopped screaming. It was Richard's first time. He had hoped that she would have been more understanding that he would be nervous. But he was wrong. So he buried her in the woods behind his house. He thought he would be upset knowing that she was gone forever. However, for whatever the reason, he was happy she was dead. Why would he have fallen for such an ugly thing like her? She was pretty on the outside, but inside, she was disgusting. She was full of hate, lust, envy, sloth. It was only after she was dead that he had finally realized that. He did everyone a favor by killing her. That was when Richard decided that blondes were not his type. Richard looked through his binoculars again and saw that Sarah was getting ready to go on her lunch break. Could so much time have gone by so fast? He checked his watch, seeing that, indeed, it was 12.25. She would be leaving the parking lot in exactly five minutes. Richard smiled. 
He loved how watching her made time just seem to fade away. Sarah gave him a sense of belonging, a sense of perfection placed into one beautiful creature. He felt a lump in his throat, knowing that soon, very soon, he would be taking her home. He would see if she truly was the one that he was looking for. 12.30 Sarah was in her car and drove out of the parking lot to get some food at her favorite restaurant. He waited his usual 10 seconds before leaving, then followed her. She went through the drive through as usual, and even got the same meal she always got. One grilled chicken Caesar salad with a cup of water. Not only was she very healthy, but she knew how to save money too. Richard knew this well. He saw her eat at this restaurant for quite some time. After this, she would head to the nearby park to eat her lunch. If it was raining, she would eat in her car. Of course, if she ate in her car, she was very particular to clean up after herself. She was very meticulous to make sure that she was clean. She was a lot like Richard. All the more reason that maybe, just maybe, she would understand him. Sure, Richard didn't always eat healthy, but he knew how to save money on food, that's for sure. This made Richard remember the second choice he made. Her name was Amy. She had fiery red hair and was punctual, of course. However, she was too punctual. She was always two minutes early, for work, for class, for bed, for everything. Again, he tried to look past it and took her home anyway. When he got her home, she was a bit smarter than Samantha was. She tried to deceive him and make him think that she was really falling for him. After Richard had untied her, she tried to attack him. She grabbed a knife that she had hidden in her back pocket. Why would she do that to poor Richard? All he wanted to do was tell her that he loved her. Amy cut his face and part of his arm, left a dirty scar on him, but with a hard smack, he knocked her knife and her to the ground. Richard thought about crushing her throat the same way he did to Samantha. But Amy attacked him. He wanted her to feel the same way that he did when she attacked him. He took the knife and plunged it into her. Richard counted 15 times before she finally stopped screaming. Afterward, Richard realized he kind of enjoyed stabbing. At least now Samantha won't be lonely anymore, Richard thought as he buried Amy next to her. Maybe brunettes are nicer. 1.30 p.m. She was back at work, making her usual phone calls, and Richard was back in the parking lot. It wouldn't be much longer before she goes home. Richard shook with anticipation as time started to tick by. 2.30, 3.30, 4.30. It wouldn't be much longer until it was time to invite her over. Of course... Samantha and Amy weren't the only ones that Richard had over. He also had Rebecca, Ashley, and Hannah. All three of them were brunettes, and he knew they weren't the best choices. He knew that he was on the right track, though. Each one had brown hair that was prettier than the last. Sadly, all of them fell just a bit short of being perfect. After he saw Sarah, of course... That is how he knew he was 99% sure that she was the one he was looking for. The perfect one for him. 5.05 p.m. Sarah was in her car and driving home. Only about six more hours and she would be home with him. Richard smiled and started his truck. He didn't let his excitement get the better of him, though. He knew if he messed up now, he would spook her, and he would never have the chance to talk to her. He slowly followed the same route back to her home, taking his time to make sure she wasn't going to notice him. Richard had this route all planned out. He was going to stop at an empty house not far from where Sarah lived, and he would climb up a tree to his usual spot to watch her from her window. Sarah had this thing with open windows. It was almost like she wanted to be seen, and Richard loved that. Richard imagined that she knew he was out there, and that she was beckoning him sweetly. Oh, my sweet Richard, when will you come and see me? Richard grinned, gazing through the binoculars and watching her through the windows of her house. He watched her make dinner. Spaghetti. His 
favorite. He knew, he knew for sure that she had to be the one. No one else would have known that was his favorite food, and yet, here she is, making him dinner the night before he was coming to take her home. He felt like destiny had brought them together, and he was eager to take her away. His eyes started to grow heavy. He hadn't slept in four days, and now it was starting to take a toll on him. He longed for his bed, but he longed for Sarah more. He couldn't wait to bring her home and sleep next to her. However, if he was too tired, he would miss the chance to take her home. He knew that. Maybe, maybe if he closed his eyes for just a moment, he could see her sooner. He decided to lie against the trunk of the tree and slowly doze off to sleep. Not much longer, he thought. Not much longer. When Richard opened his eyes again, it was 11.30 p.m. on the dot. Showtime. Richard peered through his binoculars, checking every window. The lights were out, there was no movement, and all was still. This neighborhood was fairly quiet at night, so he knew no one would see him sneaking into her house. He slowly climbed down from the tree, checked to see if anyone else could be watching, then carefully made his way across the front lawn to the door. Normally, Richard would have taken the back door, but it was stuck closed. The one in the garage was blocked with boxes, so that left Richard with only one entrance, the front door. After carefully climbing the stairs of her porch, he noticed that something was amiss. The front door wasn't closed all the way. This was kind of unsettling for Richard. After all, if she was as careful as he was, she would have noticed that the door was ajar. Right? Richard felt a knot grow in his stomach as he slowly opened the door. Pictures were shattered on the floor. Some of the furniture was knocked over. And one of the end tables was broken in half. Did someone break in? Richard felt panic arise in his gut. Something was very, very wrong. Did someone hurt Sarah? Is she okay? Richard's breath quickened as he entered the living room, following the carnage to the stairs. It looked like there were spots of liquid on the floor. Blood? Richard couldn't tell. It was too dark to see. Richard almost wanted to run away, before something else went wrong. But he had to know. He had to know if Sarah was okay. He quickly ran up the stairs, following the trail of liquid across the floor. The trail ended at a door he couldn't see from the outside, a room he had never seen before. He hesitated before grabbing the doorknob, but with a quick breath, he drew open the door. Darkness. Trembling, he reached for a flashlight and flicked it on. The room was full of pictures. Pictures all over the walls, the ceiling, the furniture. The room was covered with them. However, that's not what caused Richard to become filled with dread and terror. All the pictures were of him. Each picture was a picture of him following Sarah. How could she have known? How? He was so careful! Richard started to back out of the room, realizing he needed to just run as far away as he could. Before he could even make it out of the door, the lights flicked on. Where do you think you're going? Richard almost screamed. His eyes slowly adjusted to the light, gazing upon Sarah. But she wasn't the way she always looked. Sarah was covered in blood, wounds covering her face and body. Her head hung to the side like her neck was broken, her eyes bulging and red. That was when Richard noticed the putrid smell. Richard knew that smell. He knew that smell well. It was the smell of death. You wanted to see me. You wanted to meet me. Why are you running? She said, wheezing through her mangled throat. What? No, no, who are you? I can't believe. 
forgive you. She gurgled. You watched me for days, weeks, and now you want nothing to do with me? What happened to you? Richard screamed. She laughed, blood <laughs> spewing from a slit in her throat. Richard, she whispered. You know exactly what happened to me. And you know exactly who I am. Sarah's head lurched from one shoulder to the other with a loud crack. I am Samantha. I am Amy. I am Rebecca. I am Ashley. And I am Hannah. But you know exactly who I am. S Sarah? Richard stammered. She smiled, pointing her finger at Richard. I'm perfect for you. Richard screamed in terror. He backed into a corner, trying his best to run away. However... This room had no other exit. Richard cried and wept, pleading for help as he was stabbed by Sarah over and over again. He counted 15 times before everything went dark. I don't believe you, Tony said. There's no way I could ever believe your stupid story. Well, how else would you explain it? Johnny exclaimed, pointing at the TV. They said he locked himself in that abandoned house, in a room full of pictures of women that went missing. They even checked around the guy's house and all of the bodies were there. I think you've been watching too much TV, Tony said with a smirk. He was just a nut job that locked himself away and did the rest of us a favor by offing himself. Johnny scowled. You just don't like the fact that I can tell a more interesting and convincing story than you can. Tony snorted. Yeah, yeah, entertaining, sure, but whatever. Tony looked down the aisle, watching as a woman slowly looked over some clothes. Hey, how long has she been there? Tony asked. Johnny shrugged. How should I know? I never saw her come in. Well, I'm going to see if she needs any help, Tony said. Go stock housewares. Tony walked towards her while Johnny walked to another aisle. Upon approaching the woman, he realized that she was actually very pretty. She was wearing a green sweater, skinny jeans, and a black beanie that slightly covered her brown hair. Um, excuse me, miss. Uh, can I help you find anything? Tony asked her. The woman turned around with a pretty white smile. No thanks. I'm just browsing. <laughs>